Oh, hello there. You're probably wondering who I am. Well, I'm the man who knows too much. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out The Man Who Knew Too Much. This is Alfred Hitchcock's 1956 movie. I know there are two versions of this movie. There's a one that he made in like 1934 and then there's one that he made in 1956. I'm not sure if this is a remake of his movie or if it's a different story with the same title. I'm assuming he's remaking his 30s version. I've heard that this one is better than the old one, which is why I'm watching the newer version, the 50s version. I've just heard that it's better than the original, and the original is also really short. It's like an hour and something minutes long. This one is two hours long. I was really surprised by how short the original was, so I chose to watch the 1956 version today, and I hope that it was the right choice. And yeah, I don't really know anything about this movie, but let's do the lighting. I, that was that was a really horrible segue, but let's do the lighting. So let me turn on the light and we can decide what color it should be. Boop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the lighting today, the per, the, what am I trying to say? I literally cannot speak right now. The poster for this movie is purple, which is a very interesting color. So I'm going to match that and I'm going to go purple. That's a little bit pink. I'm going to match that and okay, it's still pink. There we go, that's, that's more of a purple. I'm gonna match that and I'm gonna go purple because the poster is purple and I, I don't know, I quite like the color purple too. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon where I have uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube, as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early. There are also two exclusive Patreon movies a month that you guys on Patreon get to choose. Thank you so, so much if you check it out. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, well, guess what? I'm a man who doesn't know too much about this movie, so let's just dive on into it. I hope you enjoy my reaction to The Man Who Knew Too Much 1956 version. Interesting that we're seeing the orchestra. Is this part of the movie or are we just seeing the orchestra because why not? <laughs> the guy who has to play the gong has the best job. Imagine if he messed up. <laughs> okay, I was wondering why this guy was just standing here. This is definitely part of the movie. He had one job and he did it. Casablanca. That's a movie, isn't it? Casablanca? I haven't seen it. Hey, look, a camel. <laughs> that kid is me. I would also say, hey, look, a camel. <laughs> the kid deserves it. <laughs> The kid deserves to be yelled at, okay? Uh, your little boy accidentally pulled off his wife's veil, you oh. know? Hey! Oh, I want to introduce my wife. I mean, it was an accident, but the kid was also was also wandering. They should have kept him in check. Oh yeah, sit down, sit down right in front of Joe there. Oh, I thought his name was Hank. Uh, oh, no, it's my wife's name. I've called her that for so long, nobody knows her by any other name, do they? No. I do. Mommy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Small boy. Uh, you see, I'm a doctor. Do oh, you think well, this, uh, he sounds like one. Like face covering stuff is gonna come back later in the movie? You will naturally be stopping at the Hotel La Munia or La Menera. Do you live in France, Mr. Bernard? Sometimes. Do you eat snails? <laughs> <laughs> what a question. We tried everything to get rid of them. We never thought of a Frenchman. <laughs> He's like, this kid has just insulted my entire country. <laughs> what business are you in, Mr. Ben? However, I'll be there later, and perhaps we might have a drink together. Fiacre? Gee, I don't know. A wagon! I want to ride in a wagon! Fair. I love wagons. <laughs> he also skipped over his job. She said, what's, what do you, what's your business or something? And he just ignored the conversation. They were talking like they were very dear friends. Well, we probably knew him before. What? Certainly. Yeah, Joe, you are reaching for something. And he knows that you uh, served in North Africa in an army field hospital. Honey, it, it, he was I... asking all kinds of questions and you were answering. Okay, well, Joe is true here, but she's also being a little paranoid. But I think that in the movie context, she's correct. Huh? Oh, hearty heart. Hardy heart. heart. <laughs> they work really well together. I love it. Is Bernard going to be the man who knows too much? 
Come on. We're being watched. What? Oh, come on. Oh, Joe's actually right. See, I thought Bernard was just a friendly man, and I thought it, originally Joe was being a little, a little paranoid. But I think the more that she talked, she, she convinced me a little bit. I asked my teacher, what should I try? Okay. Shoes on. Said I, whatever will be, will be. <laughs> this is really adorable, actually. Dina, for the boy. Yeah, come here. Right around the corner. I don't trust liquids. The last Hitchcock movie I watched, Notorious. You don't trust liquids in that movie. I'm not trusting liquids in this movie. Oh, you know, the theater requires time. And for me, time is often a luxury. Okay, but you're having drinks right now. And sell. What? What? Whatever gives the best profit. Weapons. People. I'm so tense at the moment. Pardon me, monsieur, I regret disturbing you. Okay. They knew each other as well. Oh my god, who is Bernard? He's so strange. You see, Bernard, il faut absolument que je vous rencontre le plus vite possible. As fast as possible. What? What is as fast as possible? Another night? Oh, sure, sure. We'll get together again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Good night. Who is Bernard? Also, Bernard's score is really good right now. It's really uneasy and unsettling. Me trying to be comfortable watching a movie. <laughs> They're still being watched. What people? Another talking. Oh my god, this is so intense. You must think me awfully rude. I've been staring at you ever since I saw you at the hotel. Uh, what my husband is trying to say is that Broadway musical shows are not produced in Indianapolis, Indiana. Well, no. Of course we could. That's very true. Sort of turn around here or something. You know, <laughs> kind of hard in the neck. <laughs> Wait, why is this movie kind of funny, though? Supposed to dig in. Oh, uh, allow me to show you, will you? Uh, you use only the first two fingers and thumb of the right hand. Oh. No. Is this actually true? Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, boy, <laughs> he's, use... he's really having difficulties at the moment. And it's very good, isn't it? Mm. Very good. It looks really good. Sounds like anything work. I'm preparing a report on soil erosion at the moment. Mm -hmm. you know... Wow, interesting stuff, Edward. But being insulted. After all, you can't blame him, can you, for turning down an old married couple like us for a girl like that? I would be mad. I would be mad that he didn't say this. Well, as a matter of fact, Louis Bernard, the big buyer from Paris, was going to take us to the market yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll go over and cancel out. Now, Vince. Oh, my God. Oh, we, we'd love to go. Oh, we'd be delighted. I don't know why he gets... This family is really nice, actually. They're trying to simmer everything down. <laughs> The medicine man, that sounds cool. It took two boys, one girl, and two sets of twins, didn't it? Oh, and Mrs. Morgan's high. <laughs> That's a very interesting to, way to think about money, especially when you're a doctor. Well, I'd like to say something where nobody could hear us. Well, this is the safest place. When are we going to have another baby? Oh. It's been a robbery! Hank. Hank, what are you gonna do? Not the pots! That's the saddest thing I've ever seen. Not the donkey! That's even sadder than the pots. Someone just got absolutely stabbed in the back. I love it. I love it.
And he's gone. Oh, and he's like sitting on the knife too. See, I would have forgotten all of the names that he said. I'm the new bureau of police. Better be going, I think. Heaven knows when we should be back. Long session. I love how many extras there are in this movie. It really just makes the streets feel alive. Why should he pick me out to tell? Yeah, why? What you said about him last night, the poor fire. It's because he was asking you so many questions. He might have been. He might have been gauging whether he could tell you or not. I'm not. I don't know. So. Louis Bernard is a stranger to you. I met him for the first time in my life yesterday on a bus. The great marketplace. He comes to you when he is about to die. Hey! It is a little suspicious, but it's not. Because he placed complete confidence in you. Not to? Boy, you not only ask the questions, you answer them too, don't you? <laughs> That's a good line. Came here to make a simple statement of fact and not be subjected to a police grilling. Monsieur, I would like you no, to... No, no, you let me finish. Now let me finish this. I love how he gets angry so quickly. Tell even one word of what Louis Bernard whispered to you in the marketplace. Your little boy will be in serious danger. Remember, say nothing. That was such a cool shot, the close-up on the phone, and then zooming out slowly while panning around to reveal his face. Oh, it's so cool. And who is that bald guy? My wife doesn't answer. Puis je parle au concierge. What's happened? Where's the son? Where's the wife? If I find anything out before you get back, I'll telephone you here. Just don't waste any time. Goodbye. Yeah? Aren't you going to let me see the message? No. I don't... I... Don't. I think that I should see it. Your son is dead now. Murdered right before his eyes. It's a horrible shock to a little boy. I don't know. Hank was honestly probably okay with it. He seems like a strange kid sometimes. Well, what about Mr. Drayton? Oh, Mr. Drayton checked out. He what? He checked out. Was he uh, in on it the whole time? We about to have our monthly fight? I hope not. Ben, you need to just tell her the facts. Come on. I make my living knowing when and how to administer medicine. Now, I know you'll feel better if you take these. Now, why fight? She hasn't really, though. Ben, come on. See there? I know, I know. That's what I said. You were right about it. It was strange. Yes, I know all that. Yeah, Joe figured this out ten minutes into the movie. There's nothing very suspicious looking about us, is there? No, because he was wrong. It was a different married couple. It was, uh, what's her face? Edward. You'll be telling me next it's Mr. and Mrs. Drayton. It is. That's who it was, Joe. Ah. And if this is your idea of a joke, oh it's my not a very god. funny one. Oh my god. It's crazy. It's crazy how I didn't even realize it until about three seconds before he said that. Why? They've taken him away. This is why you, this is why you needed the, the medication. Now sit down. Yeah, but he did give her sedatives and You did, you did Yo, please. Please. I would be mad at him actually if someone gave me sedatives for this. I'm a little confused about why he's not out looking for Hank. We're going to London. The Drayton's had a private airplane. I found that out. He's going to London. We can land any place, no trouble with passports or anything. So we're going to London to find him. I never thought this movie would be like a find my kidnapped son. Please, Joe. Please, Joe. <laughs> I love the grief on her face. Really good acting. Also, that was a really good camera shot. Just going back and forth between Ben and Joe and stuff like that. It was really cool. It's been four years since I played London. Well, I guess you're the kind of a gal they don't forget. That's nice of him to say. She doesn't look happy. Is that is that the wife? It doesn't look like the wife, but maybe she's wearing like a wig. And now the Frenchman was sent to Morocco at our request to check up on an assassination plot here in London. Those people kidnapped your boy in order to keep your mouth shut. Yeah, really makes sense. It's the trunk car these people hold. He's perfectly safe for the moment. In 
when they've done what they want, they'll let him go. Is that the idea? Mm. Trying to prevent a man being murdered here in London. A boy. If you don't oh, tell me where you go. I thought they were, he was still talking about the son. We just can't. Well, I've got a son of my own. I don't know what I do. I hope he understands. I love, like, the dilemma that they're in right now, you know? Telephone call for you, Mrs. McKenna. Oh, boy. It's going to be, uh... Telephone call for Mrs. McKenna through here, please. It's going to be bald man again in the chair. Where is our son? Where have you got him? Mommy, is that you? Oh, Hank, darling, are you really all right? I'm a little scared, Mommy. Oh, I'm a little scared. What a brave kid. Eight? Go on, Hank. What? Hank! They turned off the phone. Oh. I really like this movie. That was again a great camera a camera shot, you know, it started a little bit wider There was like kind of a, a little bit of space between the characters and then when Hank came on the phone It kind of pushed in and it was a very intimate moment a very sad moment, but intimate moment Everything all right? Sir? Yeah, yeah Your room keys, yeah. Thank you Oh, uh, here This is a hotel room. Are you joking? This is so nice Camden Town, Gulliver 6198 it's almost my name, Gulliver, Oliver, same thing, really. Well, we got to draw wire, I couldn't believe it. What are you doing down in Morocco? Exciting. Oh, you're the perfect answer to what London needs, Joe. This Guys, this is not the time to be happy. Let's calm down. They don't, they don't know. I know they don't know, but still. Doctor, how clever. Especially in such a psychosomatic business. And Jan, will you keep quiet? Yeah, Jan can go away. She can bugger off. Back home lately? Oh, how can I? They know me there as Elva McDuff. It doesn't oh, quite fit me anymore. Uh, where's your boy? I'd like to see which one of you he looks like. Everything's too happy. Parnell, I'll be back as soon as I can. Excuse me. I loved, well I hated, but I loved the happiness in the room contrasted with the dire situation that these two characters are in. The footsteps are stressful. Oh, there's another one. Hide. Hide behind the pillar. No, they're a little too small actually. Pretend you're a tree. Wait, maybe this is the guy that you want. No. Oh. <laughs> Jump scare. Rose Chapel, come in. There's a lion on the wall. What the heck? What? Oh, it's a taxidermy place, that's why, obviously. Ambrose. I think this gentleman wants to talk to us. <laughs> He's like the guy who was stalking me. Your name was given to me by someone I happened to meet in Marrakesh. You know he's dead just as well as I do. Now, I've come here with a business proposition. I don't see how you can turn it down. Father, call the police, quick. And now, sir, shall we go into this a little more carefully? Wait, wait, wait just a minute. You told him to call the police. Yeah, that was not discreet at all. It's obvious I'm in the wrong place. Now, all right, let go of me. Let, come on. <laughs> Oh my god, saw him in half of the sawfish. What? They're actually gonna kill him? Wait, I thought they were gonna, I thought the guy was gonna start sawing at his neck. Listen, Chris, why don't you take William Hicker's column out of the paper? Joe. That was such an interesting story. I was invested so much in it. It's Ambrose Chapel. Yeah, I thought it was a place, so when they went to a man, I was like, what the heck, it's a man? I thought that was a cool little twist, but it is a place, so the movie just twisted the twist that I thought was real into a twist. That didn't make any sense, but it did in my mind. I really like Joe in this. She's such a go-getter. Something weird going on here, and I can't quite well, follow. Let's try to figure the whole thing out. First of all, there was a man Maybe. named... Maybe. Where's their son is the first question you should ask. Yes? Doctor! Doctor, come oh back, my God. Joe! Oh, Joe's calling. I thought it would be Mr. Baldman. I know the address. You wait there. I'll be right over. All right, I'll meet you outside. Bye, dear. Yes. Would you say that address was... Partners in Crime, Batman and Robin, Sherlock and Watson.
Oh, oh my god. Don't know why I was doing that with my hand. It just it just had to happen. <laughs> you better go to bed, dear, or you'll be overtired. Can I finish? I'm winning. It looks like the daytime outside. What time is it? Like 3 p.m.? Who's this guy? He looks so cool. That's not a very orthodox sentiment. Bulletproof armor? Your box is nicely placed. Or should we say strategically placed? Ha 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 ha, good one. Okay, this guy should be listening to it a lot, so he has it down. Oh, and look, you can see her there too. You can see Joe on the other side. That's really cool. Come on, come on, Ben, get there. You're so close to finding Hank. You're at the building. Go upstairs, go upstairs, go upstairs. Oh, this is a really good shot. Oh yeah, now they know, now they know, now they know, now they know. Hide, hide your faces, put the books up to your face. Oh, how come hymns always make things so much more dramatic, you know? Whenever people are in a church doing hymns and a dramatic moment is happening, it's 5,000 times more dramatic. Oh, snap, snap, crackle, and pop. Yeah, he's just upstairs. He's just upstairs. Come on. That's a great shot. That is a great, great shot. And what about your wife? Did she go outside just to get a breath of fresh air? Yes, yeah, well, she did. Tell me what you want. I'll do anything. No. Oh. You've got to send the police right away. Or do I? Uh, that won't be necessary. Uh, I'll have the chapel. Is Albert Hall where the shooting is going to happen? There's nobody there. No, there is. The doors are just locked. It was no more than five minutes ago. Hmm, let's take a look. Well, I've tried the door and it's locked. We'll have to force it open. Break it down, break it down. I love that shot of him just kind of unconscious on the altar. Walden, you stand by until the car arrives from the yard. That's all, Matthews. You're not leaving. Orders, madam. Can we give you a lift somewhere? Don't leave, don't leave. Come on. B ben, Ben, you have to get up. Ben, get up and open the door. Everybody out. Come on. Into the car. But what about all the food? What about if something's in the oven? You'll burn it. Bringing people in in secret. Give me the Swiss Embassy any time. There's neutrality for you. <laughs> Go Switzerland. That's a nice looking place. Wait, that's the composer. Wait, that's beautiful. There must be a real poster too. There's the shooter. I love that. I love that camera work, though. You have a very nice little boy, madame. His safety will depend upon you tonight. No, that's only the ambassador. His prime minister's the one with the bald head. Bald head? Bald head? Men in the chair? I don't even remember if the guy in the chair was bald, to be honest with you. It, he just looked bald. Oh! The symbols at the start of the movie! How did I not connect it until just now? The symbols at the start of the movie and then the text that says change was one land's men's one family's life forever. Oh my god, that makes so much sense. Is that Bernard Herman? I don't know what he looks like. It'd be cool if that is. I love orchestra scenes in movies. Ah, let's go!
Oh, his target in sight. I love this shot of Joe, just right there when she turned around with the music. I don't know why, but there felt like there was something special about that shot. It was just kind of beautiful. The symbol guy sitting politely in his chair. The two instruments of death right beside him. The singing has started. The singing has started. she too stunned to speak? Why doesn't she try and go up? I love the slow turn of the head. Oh, I love her emotions. Oh, I love this ending so much. She, oh, she's not doing anything because her son depends on it. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm slow. Oh, once, the, once those drums start playing, we know we get close. Oh no, these drums are starting. Oh, come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. <laughs> this is so awesome. This is so awesome. This is one of the most epic finales of a Hitchcock movie, I think, in my opinion. And probably my favorite piece of music in any Hitchcock movie. No, 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 don't get up, don't get up, don't get up. I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed. Oh my god. It's ramping, it's ramping, it's ramping. Oh my god, what a shot. That's a great shot. Ah, what a shot too. <laughs> ah, into the light, revealing itself into the light. Oh my god, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh, see you later, alligator! What a bad assassin if he missed because of one scream. <laughs> oh, there they are. Look, it's just a flu. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> Black Knight, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail. It was, my dear lady, it was. Will you excuse us? Now let's get the, your son back. His Excellency will see you now. His Excellency? Who is it? Who is the bald man? And that's that, I suppose. Yeah. Right. Oh. What? Considering that he's dead. Well, they don't know. They don't know. When I hoped and expected that he would be totally unable to attend. So this guy's the big boss all along? I thought he was bald, I'm gonna be honest. I think I only thought we could... How are you going to get the child out of here? Eh? 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 <laughs> no, say eh one more time, I dare you. I won't be able to say any more where he has been tonight. Oh no! You wanna kill the child? What's the phone number of that embassy? You got it? No, no. What are you thinking No, about? let me try something. Grovner 01... What's your plan, Ben? Delighted, delighted, delighted. The ambassador too will be de This guy seems so nice. Good evening, Dr. and Mrs. McKenna. How very oh, nice she, okay, so she's gonna sing okay, now. That's Brady, what's gonna happen. Friend, I guess it's sort of been foreshadowed. She's been talked a lot as a singer. This is the charming lady who saved my life at the concert. He's like, ah, I'm gonna whack you in the face. I beg you, madame, a tranquil coda to conclude a dramatic evening. I'm very flattered. To conclude a dramatic movie, more like it. Just a little girl, I ask my mother, what will I be? 
Oh, this is the song she sang with her kid. I asked my teacher, what should I try? Should I paint pictures? Should I sing songs? He's gonna start singing, right? He's gonna start singing. Sing, kids, sing! I love that they're still letting him sh or shave his hair, gel his hair. I guess so. Then go on, whistle it. <gasps> whistle it as loud as you- She doesn't want him to die. Yes, Mrs. Dayton. Dayton, right? Future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. Oh my god. Sera, sera. What will be? Just go, just go upstairs. Just bring him downstairs. Just bring him to the mother. Just bring him downstairs. It's not that hard. It's gonna be Ben, it's Ben, it's Ben. No! Ah, no, 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 no. I'm sure you'll not let it go from life. That's not what she meant. Come on. She needs to. She needs to attack him. Push him down the stairs. Ah! He listened to what I said. That felt like a very abrupt, like, I wanted to see more of Hank hugging Joe. Is that the end? I know Hitchcock doesn't like to, like, keep his movies going after the end. Like, he just ends the movies. But that one, I thought, I think need needed an extra, like, two minutes, you know? And that was my reaction to The Man Who Knew Too Much, the 1956 thriller mystery starring James Stewart, Doris Day, who did exceptional in this movie. Bernard Herrmann did a little cameo. Brenda DeBanzi, Christopher Olsen, and Bernard Miles. I really, really enjoyed that movie. I thought that it kind of felt like a kind of Hitchcock blockbuster, if you will. It was kind of the most American or Hollywood-esque Hitchcock movie that I feel like I've seen, you know, one that I feel like everyone would go into the theater and enjoy instead of going to maybe Vertigo and being maybe a little confused by the end or kind of going over some people's heads or Rear Window, which is kind of a very intelligent, kind of not intelligent as you need to be intelligent to watch it, it's just an intelligent movie in general, you know, but this one, it was kind of, fairly easy to follow the plot is fairly simple and it has some big epic moments it kind of felt like a hitchcockian blockbuster if you will and i know that like north by northwest could be considered a hitchcockian blockbuster just with the locations like the the spy thriller-esque feel of that but this one had a way easier to story to follow than maybe like north by northwest so i feel like this was like the the hitchcock blockbuster that anyone could go and enjoy you know what i mean do you know what i mean when i say that i don't know if i if that kind of makes sense but that's kind of how I feel about this movie. But yeah, overall, I thought that this movie was was very good, very suspenseful. I was on the edge of my seat quite a bit, and I thought that it had one of Bernard Herrmann's best pieces of music. And I'm not sure if that is a Bernard Herrmann score. I don't know. Like I'm talking about the orchestra scene. If you if you're not if you're not aware, I'm talking about the scene where the guy's about to assassinate the the prime minister in the orchestra, and the, the orchestra is blazing. And I don't know if that is his score. If that is a piece of music that he just conducted. I'm assuming it's his score and I think it was my favorite piece of music in any Hitchcock movie It was so dramatic. It was so beautiful It was moving and I think it has to do with the shots that were accompanying the music But also just the music itself. I thought was so good. I'll get to the music in a bit I also I just thought that this movie in general was really really well done and getting into the reviews I'm a little bit shocked at how kind of low down the reviews are for a Hitchcock movie, not to say they're bad reviews by any means, 7.4 out of 10 and 87% on Rotten Tomatoes is not bad. 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb is a is a good movie. I wouldn't say it's a reviews for a great movie, but it's reviews for a good movie. And Rotten Tomatoes, 87% is amazing. Any movie that would be happy with an 87%, any movie would be happy with like an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. So 87% is great. But it seems like audiences aren't as keen on this movie than a lot of other Hitchcock movies. And that kind of makes me curious 
why are audiences not liking this movie as much as let's say like a rear window and i know rear window i feel like even for me rear window is a better movie but maybe if movies like rope or something like that you know movies that hitchcock have made that maybe aren't as intellectual in quotation marks as rear window or vertigo or psycho or movies like that but rope still had a really really good score but this one 7.4 i think is the lowest score i've seen for a hitchcock movie so i'm just really curious as to why this movie is not as loved as other hitchcock movies i'm very interested in that but yeah getting into bernard herman's score guys bernard herman is an incredible composer someone said in one of my comments in one of my hitchcock movies i think it was rebecca that he had a falling out with hitchcock at some point and that kind of terminated their their composing directing duo because bernard herman has composed so many hitchcock movies and his scores really help to elevate the movies they make so much tension and they just add so much in this movie at least it added so much epicness to this movie you know so much like grandeur i guess it it kind of created the feeling of a blockbuster movie and i kind of got the idea that this movie almost felt like a blockbuster during the or orchestra scene I'm, i keep wanting to say orchestra scene but it's orchestra 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 that was my favorite moment in the movie the whole that whole sequence it kind of reminded me of the godfather part three if you've seen that you know you know that there's an orchestra screen what am i trying to say you know that there's an orchestra scene in that it's more actually i guess it's an opera scene but that is one of my favorite parts of the godfather part three and in this one it's, it's the same thing you know it's so intense and that is because of the music also the shots don't don't do anything to disappoint as well or anything and i'll get to the shots in a second but the music in this movie was great especially that it then during that moment but also at the start when bernard is around and when bernard's in their room for instance and they're trying to figure out who it is and joe is like very very unsure and very unsettled by his presence and the music is very quiet but very very eerie and the music makes the scene unsettling if there was no music in that scene i was trying to think of this during that sequence but if there was no music during that scene i don't think it would have been as unsettling it would have been a little a little weird that he was asking all these questions and you would have been like a little suspicious of him but the reason that it works so well was the music and how unsettling the music was and then how unsettling the music made me feel, you know? And that's why I was getting even more suspicious. Like, I would have been suspicious of him without the music, but I was suspicious and I was kind of unnerved at the same time because of the music. And so I thought the music really helped to elevate a lot of things in this film. Oh, but some of the shots in this movie as well were really good. I don't think it had some of, like, the best shots out of every Hitchcock movie, but Hitchcock is so like every single film that he's done there are some incredible shots and in this one as well one of my favorite shots during the orchestra scene everything i think i'm going to talk about is going to be during that one moment but during the orchestra scene the guy has the gun the music is kind of swelling and swelling and swelling and you see the gun start to poke out of the curtains it's in the shadows it's hidden behind an object and as it comes out of the object as it comes out of the shadows it goes into the light and it reveals 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 and you know you can you know it's a gun but it hits the light and you know it's like it's like that light reveal as it goes through i don't know and then it starts to turn towards the prime minister it was just such a good moment such a creative shot and such a well done well executed shot and a great reveal as well also a lot i noticed this quite a bit actually a lot of the reaction shots a reaction yeah, yeah yeah the reaction shots in this film were really well done and they were so simple and i think the reaction shots were really well done because the acting was so great but every single reaction shot with doris day for example was was really really good they were so there were some really beautiful moments again going to the orchestra scene i'm sorry if you're tired of me saying that but it was my favorite sequence and a lot of the things i remember from this movie and i will remember from this movie were from that sequence so i'm sorry bear with me if that's not your favorite sequence if you hate that sequence you're going to be hearing a lot about it and yeah, i've already told you that of, of like 500 times during this review but there are some shots during that where she was trying to hold herself back basically because she knows that hank would get hurt if she does anything and she's listening to the music she's listening to the music ramp 
up and you can see this pure emotion on her face and the camera is just the steady cam and she's kind of in the center frame or a little bit off kilter and she's crying and she's weeping and she's torn between trying to help the prime minister and not doing anything to help her son and those shots those moments were so beautiful and so powerful and it has to do with the with the score with Doris Day's acting and just the shot composition the way she was just kind of right there center frame there was no hiding for her there was no hiding from the situation there was no hiding from the audience it was just really really good shot composition and then again Hitchcock with the longer takes in his movie he really does a good job at letting the actors act letting the actors do their own thing for example when Lucy Drayton is trying to help Hank and she thinks that someone that her husband is coming up the stairs to to kill Hank and she's walking around the room and she's opening the window to look for an exit basically and she's crying and you know she doesn't want Hank to die and you know she actually wants to help Hank and the camera just lets her walk around the room lets her lets you see what she's thinking without her telling you what she's thinking and you understand what she's trying to do with no words because the camera is letting you watch the character and that happens a lot in this movie that happens a lot in other Hitchcock movies and I thought it would they did or he did I guess Hitchcock it was the director he did a very good job in this movie doing that you know for like a Hollywood more Hollywood-esque movie than usual I was I would expect a few more cuts a few more like shorter takes and maybe more Hollywood tropes but it, he still kept the Hitchcock style while making it feel very grand very epic but still very family friendly at the same time I also enjoyed the locations in this movie I thought that it was really cool that we got to be outside of America we got to be in England for a bit we got to be in Morocco we got to be in Morocco for a bit you know we got to be kind of in these different places I'm used to being in America a lot of movies that I watch being Hollywood movies are in America a lot of them as well being in London and I know this movie took place in London but it was like 1956 London so it felt very different than the London that I know so it felt like a new place that I was you know that the streets were kind of all of these brick buildings these small brick buildings and I know England has a lot of those streets I've been to England quite a few times they have a lot of those like smaller smaller towns or smaller kind of suburbs I guess and they're just the brick houses and stuff like that and they're very beautiful but I felt like we were kind of more so in the city maybe just in the suburbs but it didn't feel like we were in London you know it felt like we were somewhere else in England that was not London and that's why I really like the England locations as well I liked the quietness of the town and I liked the, that contrasted with the really 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 busyness of uh, Morocco there were so many extras so many people in those in the deserts and the markets and stuff like that and it was really cool to see just how lively everything was and it was interesting that London felt so quiet and so desolate despite it being most likely the bigger city that was just like something interesting that I just thought of right on the spot so I have no I have no reasoning of why London maybe felt more quiet but it was just like there were no people on the streets in whenever they were walking around you know it was very empty but Morocco there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of extras walking around and things happening stuff being sold and then it was just quiet in London so kind of an interesting thing actually now that I think about it and yeah getting into the cast I think I'm just going to talk about Doris Day and James Stewart because everyone else sort of had a much more minor role in this even like Brenda DeBanzi and Bernard Miles they did a really good job of course and Christopher Olsen as Hank as well did a really good job but I don't know if I saw them enough to have too much opinion on them but Doris Day as Joe she was really really good she was such a standout I don't know if I've seen her in anything I don't think she's been in a Hitchcock movie before and I don't think I've seen a movie that she's been in she was outstanding I did not expect this performance from her like obviously James Stewart is a great actor and he's probably one of the greats from this era of film but I thought Doris Day outshone him you know her emotions the the grief she could she could portray for Hank the sadness the happiness you know all of this stuff she did an amazing job I did I honestly did not expect it and I think she elevated the movie just because of her acting you know she made me like the movie she made me invested in the story more because of how good she was as an actress and I thought she like Doris Day did an amazing job and James Stewart as Dr. Ben he was really good in this movie James Stewart is really good at, as anything I like that he was really angry a lot of the time and I like that his anger would like really really flare up and then Doris Day would have to be like let's calm down let's simmer down let's let's just take a break let's just take a chill pill <laughs> you know what I mean but I thought he was really really awesome but I thought he did some things 
that I didn't like as well. You know, he kind of kept putting Doris Day's character Joe down. You know, Joe would always be right. And then he'd be like, no, 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 no. And then like 20 minutes later, he'd be like, you know, you were right, Joe. <laughs> so I wish I wish that he'd listen to Joe a little bit more. Like the sedation thing, I understand why he did it. But I'd be angry. I would. I was in Joe's camera. Like I'd be angry if someone sedated me first and then told me this information. Like, hello, why are you sedating me? I know I'm going to be like crazed about it and I'm going to probably faint. But I'd rather do that than be sedated and not be able to do anything. You know what I mean? But overall, I really liked Ben and I thought James Stewart did a really good job. Also, one last thing that I forgot to add and I wish I added at the start is my one issue with the movie was that I know Hitchcock doesn't like to overstay his welcome you know once the movie ends it ends like it's like two seconds of res resolution I thought this movie could have used a little bit more resolution I thought I was really really looking forward to seeing Joe see Hank again I was really looking forward to see the happiness on her face the happiness on his face maybe they embrace you know she says like oh we missed you or stuff like that would have been enough but instead we just got like a half a second clip of him running to Joe and then boom the movie ended so I wish that there was a little bit more resolution just to see just to kind of get the satisfaction of Hank seeing his parents again because that's been the lead up to the whole movie but that was kind of my major issue with it and yeah that is my reaction and review to The Man Who Knew Too Much the 1956 mystery thriller starring James Stewart and Doris Day thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot and yeah I don't remember what my next Hitchcock movie is. I do have a couple more that I am going to watch on my list before I take a quick Hitchcock break because I know there's a lot of Hitchcock movies but I forget which one it is. I think it might be Frenzy but please do not quote me on that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.